All right, uh, so in this video, we're gonna talk about um, this node right here and what's inside it. This is uh, a manual retarget where we're basically just retargeting a single clip uh, without using PDG. Um, the reason why I put this here is this kind of follows the model of my development. Um, and uh, I encourage you to kind of think this way as well. Um, before s setting up a, a big, system like this or something that's going to process lots of data, uh, I find it useful to um, get it working with a single uh, piece of data or instance of data first. And that will act as my proof of concept. And then if that works, then I will apply it to the rest of the data set. Um, so yeah, let's go in here and take a look and see what's going on. So uh, first thing I'm doing here is I have this uh, scene character import, and that's basically bringing in uh, my uh, um, my uh, mocap biped three um, character, and uh, you can see it has these kind of outputs: uh, the skin, the rest position, and the animated position. Um, in this case, we don't really need to worry about the animation; we're mostly just interested in this kind of rest skeleton. Um, because that's what we're going to be matching our animation to. Uh, over here on the uh, right-hand side, we have our uh, incoming animation uh, from the um, CMU website. And uh, actually, before I uh, um, go too far into this, um, you'll want to get that data. Uh, and you can get that data just by coming up here and um, if you uh, dirty and cook uh, just a second node, um, the first node will download the um, archive and the uh, second node will unzip it. Um, the archive's quite large, so you know it, it might take you a few minutes, so uh, don't be alarmed. All right, so once you have that uh, downloaded, uh, then you can read in uh, your uh, information. Um, I have the, uh, I'm basically saving this in the hip folder in a, a directory called data. Um, and so I'm using mocap import here. And for this one, I'm just using the kind of um, first skeleton file and then the first kind of animation clip. And uh, I'm reading that in, and I'm also bringing in the, uh, uh, character in its uh, rest pose. So again, it's um, the uh, basically the same thing, but on the output here, I change it to rest pose and we get both those things. And you take that uh, rest pose and you're going to stash it or use the rig stash to kind of uh, stash it uh, in with the uh, uh, animation clip. So there we go. And the once you have that, you can feed in uh, your target skeleton, which is, uh, as you can see, a completely different scale than what we're getting from uh, the uh, CMU library. And uh, you can feed that into a rig match pose. And in here, I basically uh, match the poses of the two skeletons. Um, so uh, we, as you can see, they kind of scaled one to the other, and then um, the I just uh, positioned uh, the joints um, as appropriate. Uh, one thing that I should mention, uh, one thing that I've had to do is um, the when it, uh, reading in the animation data from the CMU database, I found I've had to set the frame rate to be 120. Uh, if I do uh, lower than that, um, or the default 24 frames per second, uh, it looks as if it's moving in slow motion. So um, that's a, a good thing to know as well. All right, um, so rig match pose, uh, fairly straightforward, just trying to get things in kind of the general same space. Um, and then uh, I go through the procedure of uh, mapping the points. So uh, this, again, is fairly straightforward. 
Um, one thing to kind of be aware of here is, you know, there are multiple uh, joints here for where the hip and the kind of uh, neck is. And you want to make sure that um, all the joints get constrained properly, right? So um, the first time I set this up, I, I think I only went, you know, lower neck to neck to neck. And that gave me some bad results because all the bones uh, didn't fall along. So, um, yeah, that's uh, a kind of important thing uh, to be aware of. And uh, then we feed that into full body IK. And we then we get our kind of uh, mapping. Now, uh, one thing that uh, I should mention here is we have this uh, root constraint attribute. And um, typically, you want to use this in situations where, like uh, in this clip, you know, the character reaches, he's basically jumping to one end and then he turns around and moves in the other direction. And this is like a prime example of where you want to use the root constraint. Um, and, you know, typically you just use the, you know, the kind of hips uh, and uh, use that to constrain with. Um, and most of the time that works fairly well. But one of the things I found when processing the CMU database is because there's such a variety of animations and uh, positions and orientations um, that I was getting some issues with uh, the uh, our ankle, the ankles kind of flipping and twisting um, in undesirable ways. So I just solved that by putting um, star in here as the uh, root constraint and uh, it cleaned that problem up. So uh, something to be aware of. And then we come into here, we have our transform by attribute, which is basically shrinking it back down to size. Uh, and it's using this scene transform uh, attribute, right? Which is uh, created uh, in here. And there you go. And that basically is, you know, there's a kind of global transformation that occurs with these two rigs because they're um, different sizes. And uh, that's basically um, uh, represented uh, by this um, uh, scene transform attribute. So that's getting applied here. Um, and then here I'm taking uh, the other skeleton and transforming it appropriately as well. And this is basically so we can compare the, um, uh, sorry, the uh, retargeted animation with the original animation. And we just have a kind of frame of reference for those two. Um, okay, so uh, this is properly transformed. I feed this into a motion clip saw, which is basically going to take all the animation and, uh, you know, collapse it into a single piece of geometry. Um, I'm computing a uh, attribute here called last frame. Um, and I'll use this. Uh, the reason why I have this is eventually I'm going to use PDG and I want to know how I'll want to know how long uh, the sequence is, um, particularly if I'm you know going to be rendering it. Uh, so that's what uh, that's there for as well. So, uh, you know, we could take a look at the results of this. Uh, we read it in. And then we have a motion clip evaluate, and we get our animation back. And that's uh, that's basically how that works. So this is, yep, that's basically how the manual retarget works. Um, in the next video, I'm going to ta be talking about this uh, PDG retarget um, and basically how we drive this uh, with PDG.